And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Lynn Hanaikis, which was a request from LREX via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. It was an alvarosaurid theropod that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Inner Mongolia, China, in the Ulan Suhai Formation. And it's pretty cute. It had short arms, long legs and tail, and a long gated head. Its body type is similar to Gallimimus, but it's much smaller and it has just the one finger on each hand. So it's small. It's got a 2.8 inch or 7 centimeter long femur. Oh, that is small. Yeah. It's estimated to weigh about one pound or 450 (laughs) grams, which is roughly the same as a parrot. That is tiny. I'm just imagining a Gallimimus shrunk down <laughs> yeah. to like the size of a parrot, which I can't fathom. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Gallimimus proportions don't really scale right for that. I guess if you cover it in feathers, then that would help. Yeah, it does look fuzzy in the paleo art. It's got much shorter arms than Gallimimus too, because it's an alvarosaur. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So especially weird. I think its head's a little more elongated too, but... Just the general body shape reminded me, especially because there's all these pictures of it running or depictions of it running. So Lin Hanaikis was described in 2011 by Xing Shu and others. They found a partial skeleton, including the forelimb, part of the pelvis, vertebral column, and nearly complete hind limbs. The type species is Lin Hanaikis monodactylus. <laughs> and that genus name means Linha claw. It refers to Linha, the city near where the fossil was found. And the species name means single finger. And that name refers to it being the, quote, only known functionally monodactyl non-avian dinosaur, according to the original paper. Huh. That is surprising, because I consider most alvarosaurids to be functionally monodactyl. So, it's the first known alvarosaurid to have only the one digit the one finger, and mm-hmm. it's specifically the second digit. The digit number two. Yep, digit number two. Other alvarosaurids have a large second digit and then very short third and fourth digits, but they couldn't use those outer fingers for anything. Yeah, that's just weird because they. your quote was only known functionally mm-hmm. monodactyl. So they're also functionally monodactyl. They're just not actually monodactyl. Yeah, it's weird to throw functionally in there. Should have just been the only known monodactyl I suppose, dinosaur. I suppose. Maybe it's because you could maybe do something with these little stubby fingers. I don't know. Maybe. Or this one actually does have maybe a tiny stub of something else, or they couldn't rule out that it had a tiny stub somewhere else. This one does not. What well, had a reduced third metacarpal that connects the wrist to the fingers Mm -hmm. but there were no finger bones it tapers off and it was too small to support a finger so they know for sure Hmm. just the one finger interesting yeah it's hard to rule out the absence of something but that's a good way to do it yeah a no fourth metacarpal was found but since that third metacarpal is so short and didn't have finger bones Lynn Hanigas probably didn't have a fourth metacarpal. Probably, yeah. Because a lot of times they lose the first one and then have a big second one but it doesn't they're usually weird gaps (laughs) yeah they come back so Linhanicus is the most basal parvicursorine, which is a subfamily with large second digits. And it helps show mosaic evolution in alvarosauroid hands, since later alvarosaurids had more digits, mm-hmm. even if they were small and maybe not able to be used. So that helps show the complexity of theropod hand evolution, because theropods, they started with five fingers, and they went down to three, and then sometimes two, like T-Rex, and then sometimes one, like Linhanicus. <laughs> and Mononicus. <laughs> yep. Linhanicus may have eaten insects and then used its claws to dig around ant and termite nests. Its palms face down, so that would have helped with digging. In 2011, Gareth Dyke and Darren Nash questioned the paper about how it didn't really include European alvarosauroids and also suggested Linhanicus was not distinct enough to be different from Parvicursor, the similar small dinosaur from the Burungoyat formation. It was named in 1996. And they said the only difference clear to them was, quote, a slight discrepancy in size. Xing Shu and others responded. This all happened the year it was published. So this all in 2011. They responded to all of the points. Basically, they said they didn't agree. And they said Linhanicus had a number of features that made it distinct, including some proportional differences, like Linhanicus had this longer metatarsal number three than Parvicursor. They also said 
Parvi cursor had only been briefly described, and a more detailed comparison would probably show even more differences between the two dinosaurs. Hmm, that makes sense. Yep. So other animals that lived around the same time and place as Linhonychus included theropods, ankylosaurs, ceratopsians, small mammals, and lizards. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left. <laughs> 